the slideshow format. Yeah, I can see the slide. So if you want to put it in slideshow format. Well, what I was telling Sky is that I couldn't figure out how to do that and also get out to my browser. Ah, uh, okay. So that's that's you fine. Know. If you want to, maybe if you click the the line between click to add notes and the presentation, you can slide that down so you get a bigger screen. There you go. Well, we still Unless need you know. like part of that visible. Unless you have the Springer link links, if you have the links in another text I did file, copy that was those out. Okay, because I was going to say if you wanted, you could give that to Jody to paste into chat um, if you have them labeled. Yeah, you could do that. Um, Trying to lessen the overhead on you having oh, to definitely. drive. Definitely. Feel bad enough. Um, Morning, My name is Michelle Harvey, and I am a member of the Innovation <laughs> Advisory Group. I'll be monitoring our time today as well. Okay, I think we have more than one. Uh, somebody might be. Sounds like it. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Who's in our room? All right. Well, yeah. show, are we set to get going? Then Fran and Deja? Yeah. Yeah, let's give it a whirl. All right. Try to be super awkward. All right. So, well, good morning. My name is Sky Pike, and I'm a member of the Innovation Advisory Team. Um, I will be monitoring our time today, basically. And this session will be recorded for future use. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Deja Rubel and Fran Rosen, and they are going to present the, a presentation on flight e-resources, how scholarly content can fuel innovation. So take it away. Fran or? or yeah, Deja. I'm here, I'm sorry. It's like, what? Hi, good morning, this is Fran. I have a slide up, so I'm not as visible. Um, so I get to provide the context for what we're talking about today, which is that in order to find content that's going to fuel scholar, that's going to fuel um, innovation, then you have to actually find the content and be able to access it, right? And this is can be a daunting problem. There's a couple of things that really become problems. One is the sheer number of content number of published articles. Um, like, for example, the NSF reported, right, 2.6 million articles published on science and engineering in 2018. And I went into our flight smart search and I typed E because everything's got an E in it, right? And I found, um, actually, when I did the search a little over a week ago, I found over 20 million articles um, that were in peer reviewed journals that flight provides access to that have the letter E in them. And I did it this morning and now there's over 21 million. So that's a lot of articles. We've also found as um, scholarly publishing is changing, there's different and new models all the time for how to access and find scholarly content. Publish funding agencies are requiring, you know, that content that's created using, you know, the funds that they provide be available to everybody. And publishers are developing different open access models to make that content available. We're also finding that authors are demanding, you know, the ability to archive their content. If you write an article, maybe, maybe the published version is behind a paywall, but you could still have the right to archive that content in your own repository or in a preprint repository so that other people can find it. Um, as an example, in the growth of that on paywall, which is the best, um, the most complete list of, of open access and freely available content on the internet lists over 28 million, what they call free scholarly articles. And as a final example of just kind of the numbers that we're dealing with, on February 10th, 2021, I looked at whose collection of COVID-19 global literature on coronavirus disease. And at that point, it had over 202,000 items. And you see 151,500 were full text. I looked this morning, it's up to 207,000 plus items and over 154,000 in full text. And so that's a huge amount of content. And one of the things that libraries can do is provide tools to help people find and access that content. 
So now I'm, um, and we're using, we're not putting the slideshow up because I'll be showing you some stuff using browsers. And now I'm gonna move to the next slide and turn it over to Deja to talk about um, LibKey Nomad. So hi everybody, and thanks for coming to our session. I know we've got some very interesting competition. There's at least one I wanna definitely go see for on recording. Um, but here we're gonna talk today about LibKey Nomad First, which is a browser plugin uh, for Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. Uh, there is no Mac equivalent, so sorry about that if you are a Mac person. Um, and what this actually does is it's going to search our library holdings um, by digital object identifier or by the PubMed identifier. And Fran's actually going to show us today how easy it actually is to download because it is very much not intimidating. And I think we're doing that on Chrome today. But while she uh, switches to the browser, I wanted to let you know that um, being able to look through our holdings uh, using LibKey Nomad and have it match on things doesn't require any sort of use of your MyFSU login info. Uh, similar to how we log in to access other library resources, um, you're not going to log in until you actually are going to download the PDF. Uh, so it's not storing any of your FERPA info, it's not storing any of those logins. We're totally very privacy aware about that. And Fran here, I think, is going to switch us to a browser. And if you want to download it yourself, uh, we just threw the link in chat there. It's LibKey right. Nomad, and you'll see like the five browsers it supports. Um, I'm sorry. I'm name the, big the sharing screen is always a challenge, right? Um, oh, come on. Um, so sorry. There we are down at the bottom. OK. Okay. We did practice this, I swear, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's rough. It's okay. I know. Um, okay. So, so I, yeah, I apologize. So, um, so here I am, and I'm going to go to that link that I just showed you, which is libkeynomad.com, and that brings me up to this great page, which they. Um, you can learn all kinds of things here, but you can either choose a Chromium-based browser or Firefox, and they're equally easy. I'm going to click on Google Chrome right now, because that's where I am, and it says Add to Chrome, so I can do that. I'm letting it do whatever it wants. Okay, so that's the first step, and it lets me turn on my sync. Now, I don't actually, I kind of work on the library stuff separately, so I'm not going to do that. But, um, and if those of you who use Google Chrome know they love to sync everything. Um, so now I can either scroll through or I can look for Ferris State University. And you see it's a selection saved. And now I am happily um, installed. So I'm gonna close those things and we'll go to, um, we're gonna a go publisher's right to web page. The Springer Link article. We're going to show you how that works. And how awesome it is because it's going to try and solicit money off you, which you don't need yeah. to pay. <laughs> you can see that. Right? I mean, you'll tell me if it's not showing up. So, but, um, okay. So, this is an interesting looking article. Um, and this does a live lookup query, and I just want to point that out because if you're like me and you're on satellite or slow internet, the button and or buttons we're going to see when we look at PubMed may not appear like instantaneously. Um, I just mentioned that because I did a demo with some other faculty live over Zoom uh, about a year ago, and I was like, it will bring up all these buttons, and then we had to like wait a couple minutes on my side, which is the other reason why Fran's doing our demo. Right. Um, so you can see I brought up this article and um, it doesn't know, and this is part of, I think, the point that Deja was making. It doesn't know I'm, I'm sorry, my browser doesn't know, outside of Nomad, it doesn't know I'm from Ferris. So it's saying, hey, you can buy this. But Nomad is seeing, knows I'm from Ferris, knows that we have a subscription to this 
European Journal of Plant Pathology and that I can get the content from the library. Now, if I click, I'm gonna click on this and theoretically it's gonna ask me to authenticate so that. This is where you log in in order to get access to the actual article. Um, as we'll see in a minute with browsing, you don't have to log in to look at our holdings, but you do have to log in to actually get the thing if it's something we pay for. Right, and now it's, um, it says to access. In a minute. I don't know why it's not finding it, Deja, but. It's trying to download it is oh. what it's trying to do. So you can just close out of that. Okay, but I, and I don't know you if you need it. There you go. Yeah. So. Um, Magic, one click to PDF. Right. Um, now, can you flash back to the slides? Did that work? I didn't end up seeing the big blue button. I'm wondering if you might have to have the sync enabled. Wait, I saw the big blue button. It's right here. Okay. You can um, see it and I can't. That might be my connection. Okay. Can other people see the big blue button on the Springer article? In the lower left? The, yes. the download PDF? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's just me. That's it's fine. Explain. <laughs> right. Um, so that's telling you that even though they're happy to sell it to you, you can also, I mean, that we do provide access to it. Um, but there are other fun blue buttons we want to show them. So, because you can use um, this plugin in addition to using it on like publisher websites we're affiliated with. You can also use it in PubWeb, PubMed bleh, search results and um, the bottom part of Wikipedia where the references are. It will also look up those by DOI or PMID if they're in there. And I know we don't like our students using Wikipedia, but. At least if they have the plugin, they'll get redirected to actual good content if they're doing like a general topic search and things like that. So um, yeah, our other buttons, there's a download PDF, there's an article link button. And if you guys forget all this, just feel free to write me. I've got some nice handouts and things from our, our vendor. And um, the article link, it just goes to an article page. Usually that means there's a supplementary material for, you know, like medicine, slides, other data, and it doesn't just, you know, want to send you directly to the PDF. Um, and the other one that says access options, which you'll see moderately often, that's going to take you back to our smart search interface. Uh, so we're at 11, 12. Were you able to switch back the slideshow? I'm just not seeing it, which is totally fine. Oh, um, I've got the slideshow. Can other people see it? No, you have to exit out of this one, Fran. By, there's a little red button at the top there. Yep, there you go. Okay, so okay. I have to, sorry, I was, so there, um, nope. And now you have to go um, yeah. pull up the, uh, the share screen again. Fran, if you're switching back and forth, it's easiest if you select the top left-hand share screen. That lets you just jump from application to application rather than um, left hand one top left hand share screen shares your entire screen so wherever you click we can see it yeah okay great i'm not seeing that of course but Fran, it okay say screen one or screen two okay i'm gonna go to okay so what deja was showing you yeah. I was going to say, if you want, just go to the PubMed example in the browser and we can see all the buttons there. That might just right. be Right, and we'll go back to the slides after that. But first we'll show the yeah. browser. That. Um, we did, as Deja said, we did practice, but um, it's hard. Zoom is fun. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to go to PubMed now. And I'm going to search on antibiotic resistance mechanisms. Um, okay, so, okay. And I'm not seeing, oh, there it is. It was taking a little bit. So you can see if you were watching that. That's why I warn you. It took a little bit. <laughs> 
for the um, LibKey Nomad content to come up. And you can see all these different, but the examples of the different buttons that Deja mentioned, the article link, the download PDF, which we've already seen. Um, and this first one, it says manuscript PDF. And that's an example where Flight does not have access to the published content, you know, the officially published journal content, but we do have access to an author's copy. And what this tool does is if we don't have access to the published content, it will take us to an author's copy. So I'm gonna click on that. The manuscript PDF link should bring, immediately bring up a PDF. There's also a manuscript link button that will bring up a place that may bring up a HTML content or allow you to click to a PDF. But here you see um, over there on the left hand column, it says author manuscript, you know, to make it clear that it's not the published content, it does have the citation. And this is again, content that's available for researchers and scholars to use. Um, so that's, that's an example. Now I'm gonna go back to the slides. Um, and, okay, and, and later I will get, I will find out how to share that, what Allie was telling me, because yes, that would, that would work better. Um, so you can see the slides now. So here's the example of some of the different buttons that Deja mentioned, and then I'm gonna move down to the next line and she's gonna talk about browsing. Okay, so you probably saw a button in there that also said like click here to access full issue. If you click on that, that actually will take you to the full issue within our browsing interface. Uh, browsing is actually really cool, especially for things like syllabi, um, because you can share these links directly from your address bar by copying and pasting. Uh, those of you in library land, I know we have a few of our coworkers on here. This means you do not have to put in the prepen for our proxy URL, which is really nice. Um, if you don't remember anything today, like our library number 2120, you also can get and look us up uh, from browsing's main page. But if you're searching for our library content, we highly recommend you start here in the 2120. And uh, Fran's going to show us sort of how to, you know, look for journals by subject and uh, look up a specific subject and uh, a little more fun with the serendipitous journal process of discovery. <laughs> Yes, and the serendipitous process of, um, okay, so I'm going back into Chrome now and I'm going to bring up that link that we just saw and there's what we get when we see browsing. Um, and so you should see the access provided by us, um, again, because it's 2120. If for some reason you have another institution you want to be affiliated with and they also have a browsing interface, um, you can, of course, switch it. The only one that's coming to mind right now is MSU. Um, but if you click on one of these subjects, Miss Fran, we'll do arts. Do the arts. It's pretty. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> pretty stuff. <laughs> they, should, they bring in the cover okay. images. And, cool. uh, right. yeah. So there's a bunch of stuff because we got a lot of art stuff, right, Elise? Elise was on the chat. So. Yeah. Um, so you could copy and paste uh, this URL that's up in the address bar where it says, you know, subjects 57 questions sort title, and then just put that in a, a syllabus and people can just click on it and boom, they'll be right here. We've got about two more minutes before we we've got on a 10 minute break in between sessions. So we got about two minutes left um, with maybe some, okay. time for some questions and answers. Can we okay. back up and do ethnomusicology really quickly? Sure? I've already got it in there. So we're gonna, yeah, change I can subject. Look at the specific subject with is ethnomusicology and I can see some stuff, sorry. I just want to point out to you with this uh, simple search, um, as you can see at the top little key, there's an all results, a subjects and a journals. 
And you can also see there's a little divider that says journals available outside of browsing. Um, we get a lot of questions from faculty that are like, this is a top journal in my field, and yet it's somehow not appearing in this list. If you scroll down and it's a longer list, you will eventually see this divider. And this doesn't mean we don't have access to them through the library. It just means you don't have access to them within the pretty browsing interface. Um, the other thing we wanted to show you guys, which I know is a table of contents from the slides. Yes, we can do it from here. This will work. Um, so for example, if you wanted your students to look at this exact issue, you could copy that link from that browser. And uh, Fred, if you want to open a new tab and just put it in a new tab, I know we were going to switch browsers, but we won't be that clever. We'll just do uh, a new tab. <laughs> well, actually, I, I can switch browsers. So I'm okay. going to go in here and I'm going to stop sharing. And then I'm going to share um, Nets Netscape. Firefox. <laughs> Sorry. Netscape. Old. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Um, so I can see this in a new browser that I don't have anything set up with, but I could I still get this list and it will get me to Ferris content. And then you could tell your students, you know, click on the Pokemon Go in the field article. And if you click on that, that's when it's going to ask you for your MyFSU login to get to the actual content. Right. But Which it probably will because make... I'm in, in Firefox. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So you're so already associated. Fun. It's all happy. All right. Oh, gonna... I did want to give one quick shout out to um, our boss, Jason Bentley, for allowing us to trial it for the last year. I think we're going to keep it because it has solved a lot of other issues uh, with linking and being able to find content without getting stuck, for lack of a better way of putting it. All right. Well, thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions? We have about, we have about five minutes we can probably give you if there's any questions. Oh, and I'm putting up our emails and also, you know, if you work with a librarian, like I know, you know, then all of the librarians can help with these, using this, these resources. And if you had someone who wanted to come to our session but couldn't, um, you can just, you know, let them know. I do have like handouts that list what all those little buttons are and what they do and how to go and download the plugin, you know, they can share with students. You know. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. The vendor is pretty responsive about that. Any questions? So have you had a, um, have you had a, uh, with the sciences, have you had any, uh, my camera's going out of here. Have you had any, uh, the lib key is that you were showing sciences, is that gonna work well with like Google search and all the different search engines that will pull everything out of that and save me time searching different search engines? And is there any way to prioritize what I'm looking for? Um, or other than the search keys, like so many times I want, I don't want something and I get a lot of the something I don't want. Well, it relies, the actual Nomad plugin relies on there being a DOI or a PMID for it to look up. That's why you see the bunch that are, you know, listed as journals outside of browsing. Um, that's partly that reason, but if it doesn't have an identifier for it to look up, it can't just make that one-to-one -one, uh, match. So it's not really like a search engine so much as like an added layer that tries to search our content for you when you find out another page. Um, I know other publishers pages it works on and um, we haven't replaced um, like our Google Scholar link with LibKey yet, but it is a discussion I'd like to have with our librarians because I think it will improve some of the, uh, the access issues we have. And that way, worst case scenario, it will dump you back. Dump, I'm sorry, not a great word. It will send you back into smart search, you know, if anything breaks. That's kind of the nice thing from my perspective. You know, it doesn't, as I say, we do no harm. Worst case scenario, you're back to your, you know, normal library process. Thank you. And Sky, like, um, like I mentioned, uh, you can also, um, I mean, I think the librarian who works at the biological sciences is, 
is Heather Simon Bassett, and you can also talk to her and, you know, she can help you find the best ways to search for that content, for content right. as well. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions before we take off? If we're going to get, we're getting ready for the next session to take over here pretty soon. So. All right. Well, we thank you, uh, Fran and and Deja, we thank you for the information. As I can see where it's going to be very helpful for me in the future. So and I yeah. and did not know about those. So thank you. Yep. Tell your friends. <laughs> Shout out from the rooftops. How about that? There you go. Library here to help. <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. See you later, Elise and some other folks. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to stop recording now, so...